and I'd come back uh, every day after school. I set up a pop up shop in my front garden where I literally sold sweets and chocolate to all the kids on the road. Right, what's going to capture people's attention? And I looked outside, and my car was sitting there, and I was like, okay, I'm going to give away the car. When you go from having no money to having significant money coming in, a lot of times nobody kind of teaches you how to deal with that, you know, how to how to use the money. Welcome to PMP, the Partners in Positivity podcast, where Ashling Burnett and myself, Sarah Harty, warriors of EBP, SBP, DHBs, that's emotionally bulletproof, spiritually bulletproof, divine human beings aim to wake up and shake up the nation through positivity, humor, and shared wisdom. Before we get stuck into another awesome episode, we just want to let you know that we have a donation page if you wish to support the podcast and help us to continue providing more amazing episodes for you. If you want to Google Partners in Positivity, you'll find our Buzzsprout site and on there you can find a support button. You can click on that and support to your heart's content. Whether it's a one-time donation or a monthly subscription, we really appreciate all the donations that we get. Thanks so much. Enjoy the episode. It is an absolute privilege of ours to have Martin Eastwood here with us to share his story of overcoming fear and failure. Being the first person in his family with a working class background from Finglas, Dublin, to becoming an award-winning entrepreneur, social media personality, and familiar face from many well-known Irish and UK TV shows. His unshakable, unstoppable, unbreakable mindset led him to setting up his business, Wide Variety Events, in 2015. With over 400 events executed to date, the business has expanded to include wide variety media. Without taking any more limelight away from hearing from the man who advises us to never quit, go all in and think bigger, partners in positivity, please help me welcome Martin Eastwood. Well, that was the best introduction I've ever got. (laughs) Thanks so much, Sarah. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. That is lovely. You're very welcome. Pleasure to be here. (laughs) <laughs> hey Ashlyn, so happy what to be here guys, thanks crack? for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on. The crack, the crack is good, listen, I know we've been trying to catch up for a long time, it's probably been a year now, has it? It's been literally a year since we've been chatting and um, it's it's great to finally uh, catch up with you guys on this, so uh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, you know Martin, they say Rome wasn't built in a day, I like great it. things take time, you know. I love it. <laughs> so, Mar- <laughs> it's epic. So, Mar- I want to start by asking you, what was it like growing up in Finglas? Oh, that's a good. That's a good question. So, I think um, for me, like I, I lived up the west of Finglas. Uh, grew up on a cro- quiet enough little road called Kildonan. I was kind of always a little bit quirky. Had some mad friends. We thought we were professional wrestlers, and we did a lot of that in the back garden. You know, it was cra- It was crazy, but um. Yeah, for me it was good, and overall I thought it was, I honestly thought it was a, a pretty much a, a good place to grow up, from my experience. Very good. Who would you say was your biggest inspiration? Like, what led you on the path that you're on now? That's a great question, uh, Ashlyn. Do you know what? The first kind of, I suppose, glimmer of entrepreneurship I ever had was when I was probably around 11 years old I had a keen interest in like having a shop like I wanted to be a bit of a shopkeeper and when all the other kids were out on the road like playing football or playing kick the can or wherever I was up in the ferry house market getting stock from my shop and I'd come back uh, every day after school I set up a pop-up shop in my front garden I had like a uh, an extension lead running through the front window and a cash register like where I literally sold sweets and chocolate to all the kids on the road and I think uh, so that was probably the first experience of entrepreneurship and my auntie Cynthia facilitated that so I have to give her credit for it. Wow fair play to Cynthia I love it what a woman. She's Um, a legend she is a legend. Amazing 
I, I remember seeing uh, on Instagram before that you were going to give away your Mercedes if you hit 100,000 followers. Now, that didn't actually happen, right. but I just, I just thought, OMG, he is crazy. He's actually going to give away his car. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about that? So for me, like, for me, I wanted to throw out a little challenge that would get the people talking and... Like, you know yourself, there's, like these days and, and and then, which was last year, there's a lot of competitions on social media. If you're going to give away 50 quid, nobody's going to really pay attention. So it's like, right, what's going to capture people's attention? And I looked outside and my car was sitting there and I was like, okay, I'm going to give away the car. Um, I remember distinctly, I was sitting in Costa Coffee when I came up with the idea in Finglas Village. And so I threw out a challenge that if I got, to 100,000 followers in 30 days uh, I would give away the car which I absolutely would have because in my mind like what's more important getting connected to 100,000 people or having a car and for me like I'd much prefer the 100,000 people than than the car so it was a bit of a no-brainer and that's that's kind of how the idea came about Uh, I didn't kind of come anywhere close to the target but what I did do was I suppose you know get a lot of people talking get not you know a national kind of interest in the story and uh, it just kind of the whole thing kind of blew up a little bit <laughs> it's crazy oh my god that's amazing you actually help people as well to grow their social media following is that right that's right yeah so the second business i set up was white variety media and what we do there is we work with businesses and we help them to basically generate leads and manage their social media accounts to you know to improve their sales and build their audience so that's kind of like i really enjoy that that part of the business it's a good gig it's good helping other people grow as well and so uh yeah that's really kind of rewarding i would say really rewarding business i love it Mm, amazing i want to know have you had any challenges through the recent covid situation and how has it changed it as a person and any advice you would give to people? That is a great question. I love that question, Ashlyn. I remember it. I remember it distinctly. It was around about the. It was around about the tenth. Oh, sorry, it was the twelfth of March. I beg your pardon. At about three p.m., and one of my best employees, uh, slash talent, super talented DJs, slash selfie mirror attendant, slash superhero, Dave O'Reilly, rang me, and I was away at the time. I think I was in the UK, and he said, Martin, uh, how's it going? Uh, just to let you know, Leo Varadkar has just cancelled every event in the country. And I was like, Dave, it's not April 1st. Like, come on, pull the pull the other one. Like, And he's like, no, it really happened. Now, at the time, we had a, an event for DCU that night. We were doing a big ball for DCU or wherever. Um, and that immediately got cancelled. So within the first hour of that announcement, I'd lost 10 grand. Within about a month or two, I'd lost 100 grand. And I suppose I had a decision to make at that point, Ashlyn, um, because like when something as severe as that happens to you, you're either going to you're either going to take it and crumble and fall, or use it as an excuse, you know, or you're going to turn it into a positive. And what I chose to do is I chose to turn it into a positive. I doubled down on what I could do, which was the online marketing business. Took on uh, lots of different clients, got back the money I lost started writing for Irish Tech News which established me as a bit of an authority in the kind of online marketing space and just uh, done loads of different stuff that I kind of possibly wouldn't have done if it wasn't for the COVID situation and so based on that I would say I'm in a better position now than I was then and in terms of advice for other people I would say when you're struck down with something as negative as that or what would appear to be as negative or as challenging as that, you've got to say to yourself, look, in my view, some of the, some, well, in, in my experience, some of the best things that's ever happened to me have come as a, a, a direct result of the worst things that's ever happened to me. And so you've got to really keep that in your mind and know that when these bad things happen, good things are coming shortly after. you just got to keep that in your head. It's true. 
Brilliant, Martin. Thanks so much for sharing that and giving us some tips as well, especially with a lot of people out there that are going through a lot of upheaval with the lockdown of coronavirus, with people losing jobs, businesses closing down as well. And I that really portrays for me what you've just said, how bulletproof your mindset is. And I've watched some of your videos, I followed you online, and I can just see that you really think outside the box and you think bigger all the time. And bigger, I think, by the sounds of it, means uh, looking at things in a positive way. What would positivity mean for you in where you are right now and what you've come through? Um, you know, thank, thanks, first of all, thanks for the kind words there. I really appreciate it. I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of a, a lot of it is just, just being positive. Um, I mean, look, as any entrepreneur, and you'll notice yourself as you go along the road, you're constantly faced with challenges and setbacks and, and, you know, all of that kind of thing. But to be an entrepreneur and to start a business, you have to have that element of optimism kind of built into you or at least just it's there you know it's available it's a resource that you pull from and if you're not optimistic in my view you're you know you're in a lot of trouble and i mean it's just a better way of of looking at things a better way of living it's amazing how you can kind of lift yourself out of bad situations just by the thoughts that are going through your head and the the good news is is that the, you know you control the thoughts nobody can take that away from you so, I mean, if, if the, you know, control the controllables and don't worry about what you can control. That's kind of, that's kind of what I always say to people. Brilliant. You don't worry about what you can control. And it takes me to one of the quotes or maybe a quote you created yourself in one of the videos you delivered about overcoming fear on your YouTube channel. And you stated this in it and it was, you were not born to fear what other people think about you. Life taught you that. You were not born to fear getting rejected. Mm life taught you that you were not born to fear quitting the nine to five job you hate so you can chase your potential life taught you that where did that come from stem from did you create that yourself can you talk to me more deeply about what that means in terms of those fears that you said we potentially can control because life just taught us that yeah 100 percent, and lo love that you brought that up so a few years ago i learned from a really great speaker in the uk that we, we have kind of two natural fears in life fears that we were born with and those two fears are the fear of falling from a height and the fear of loud sudden noises and so what that tells us is is that all the other fears these these insignificant fears that actually have the ability to cripple us and our performance and our results are fears that we developed somewhere along the way now that might have been fears that were developed as a result of the people we hang around with it might have come from our parents it might have come from our school you know it could, it could have come from the people around us and so i think you got to just check why am I afraid of this? Why do I care what this person thinks? What does it matter to my life if they don't approve, you know, that I'm starting this business? And so I, I find it a bit liberating when you realize that uh, we're products of our environment. And, you know, until you change your environment, until you change who you're surrounding your time with, what you're listening to, what information you're absorbing, you know, that ultimately... Is, is what will take you to the, to the next to the next level because you're a product of your environment and I think that's kind of what I take from that <laughs> what I meant yeah and what would you say from your own experience because I know you've had a lot of um, ups and downs yourself and you've mm. overcome so much what was what would you say it takes in a person to overcome those fears or liberate yourself from those fears yeah it's a great question I think you really need to confront, you know what, I suppose there's a couple of different ways you could approach it. From my opinion, it's first of all, looking at what, what, does, what does life look like when you place that fear on yourself and you place that significance on other, people, other people's opinions? What is that actually doing to you and where, where is it stopping you from growing? And then that's kind of the second point as well, is like, what could life look like if you stopped worrying about all of these fears, like what what could you achieve? Where could you go? Who could you be with? How much better would you feel in your own mind if you stopped caring? Like I, I just it it completely baffles me, you know. I suppose the this this when people just and they they shouldn't. It breaks me heart when I see people put self limiting beliefs on themselves, you know, and, and not even self limiting, but those self limiting beliefs stemmed from somebody else putting them on them and they just happen to, to, to listen to them so much that they believe them. 
and so look in terms of in terms of liber- liberating yourself and sorry sir i'm probably going off on a tangent but i think that's where we left it um in terms of liberating <laughs> yourself i would say you know switch up your uh switch up your environment and switch up your vocabulary <laughs> you know two things to change straight away 100 percent um, it's crucially important look it, music for instance is a, is a significant mood changer and people are too so be careful who you're listening to classic thanks for that thank you sir martin that's amazing i want to know is there anybody that you listen to regularly on a daily basis just to keep your mind in check and what book are you reading at the moment uh, love that question so I'll answer the last one first the book I'm reading at the moment is Made in America by Sam Walton he's the founder of Walmart just actually started mm-hmm. that looking forward to really dive, diving in deep in that one and then your other question in terms of who do I listen to daily I love Gary V. <laughs> he's a legend I love Gary V. I love Les Brown really like Les Brown and I also for the financial stuff I like Robert Kiyosaki I think he's a, he's a good dude so I pay attention to him as well three good people right there very good I know me and Sarah were big fans of Les Brown we actually have a quote recently that we've been repeating over and over again and that is that Les Brown says her. he says when you're on the ground and if you can look up you can get up I love it it's true it's true yeah I love it I love it too. It's great. So what does the future hold for Martin Eastwood? What kind of an impact do you want to have on the world? That's an incredible question. Um, well, I, I think for me, one, I, I think I believe in making a, an impact on a day by day basis, you know, for starters, just trying to be a good person, trying to, you know, if there's an opportunity to help someone, help them, be there for people who are just spread positive messages to the world like what you guys are doing on this fantastic podcast like it's very important spread positivity because you just don't know you just don't know who you're inspiring and one thing I, I, I've i kind of found comfort in you know in the last while is the thought that listen no matter how great you are even if you're like you know uh, uh, just trying to think of an example Kobe Bryant for instance right when you die you know you, you've about 24 to 48 hours of uh, good time on social media people tributing you and all this that and the other but ultimately the world still still moves you know so i suppose always keep your feet on the ground and, and look for what you can do today um and that's that's kind of that's kind of where my head is at at the minute what can i do today to to you know to make an impact to make a difference well that's powerful cool. and Martin, I also noticed as well that you decided to undertake a 75-day challenge. I think it's called 75 Hard. Could you talk to us just Love about that. what you went through in that challenge and you know, who you were before that and who you were after it, what that did for your spirit or for your mindset or physically? Even? Yeah, Lo- love that question, uh, Sarah. So the first time I took up that challenge was, I think I started the first time around the 1st of July 2019. And probably like a lot of different people like i remember the day before uh, i started the challenge i was just having the shittiest time ever like i was really i was feeling really low i was i was probably kind of i suppose you could probably say like i don't know moderately depressed slash going out of my mind <laughs> having a bad time of it basically and i was like okay you know this is not me uh i need to fix this i need something drastic and i went down and i looked for like a challenge that would sort of fix, you know, or address the issue or help me or whatever. And what I came across was 75 hard, which is kind of disguised as a physical challenge, but it's actually a mental challenge. And you have to follow five rules every single day for 75 days, no exceptions, no alcohol, no cheap meals, no nothing, no comfort zone. And at the end of that, that just completely turned me around like dramatically like I was back to 100% I was so disciplined I was just so focused as well and honestly if anyone out there is having a hard time at the moment or going through any kind of struggle like you'd be surprised what a challenge like this can do for you you'd be surprised like just even drinking the right amount of water and doing enough exercise every day can have a huge impact on how you feel and so you know if you're struggling give it a try that's you know definitely it's an amazing program and it's free. 
Well, well done for stepping up for yourself and your life and turning that around over 75 days. Like that sounds like a long time to me, <laughs> 75 days. But um, myself and Ashley, and I don't know if you've heard from, we did um, a Wim Hof challenge. It was only for five days, but we've kept it up every day since. And it was just getting into a hot shower and then finishing the shower off with a cold one. And I, like I remember as part of the five days, he was delivering videos to us every day. And one day he just talked about what a challenge is for you as the person. And he mentioned mm. that a challenge is um, like something that we reach for to prove to ourselves that we can do something. And then you have that sense of achievement and the results and the outcome. But he said, you know, think about this, like you already have that capacity inside you, but you're proving yourself that you can do that. So just remember that you always have this capacity and that's just a way of proving to yourself who you can be or who you are already that's intact. In terms of people, a lot of people are focused these days like on challenge, what's the next challenge, what's the next challenge. Is there a place where you think people will be that they could be okay in themselves enough that they don't need necessarily one challenge after another? Or is that always going to be something that we're going to be up to in life seeking the next challenge or the next result? Yeah, that's, that's a great one. Like, I mean, I think, uh, you know, like it's 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 I suppose it's a it's a a very important question in terms of what role does challenges play and is it a temporary thing or a, or a permanent thing? I think people love a challenge and we'll always find a reason to challenge ourselves. But when it comes to the likes of these challenges, it kind of I, I suppose what I try and do is I try and say, oh, like this particular thing, for instance, like drinking enough water. Well, let me take that now and use that in every day life and just put it into my routine because actually it helps a lot i suppose for me it's just the challenge is like right do the challenge and if there's things in the challenge that you can incorporate into your daily um into your daily life then take that from the challenge and it'll keep it'll i suppose it'll take a part of that challenge with you forever but um i mean i think what what, what i like to do is just try and take little bits and build it into a nice like daily routine so i'd say a lot of people are probably like that as well but everyone loves a challenge i don't see them going anywhere anytime soon <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly i think i'm on board with you on that one as well and in terms of entrepreneurship being a challenge i know you've set up multiple business award-winning businesses and you're living the entrepreneur lifestyle a long time now what challenges did you face in getting that off the ground because i know i heard you mention that you don't need money to start something like if you have an idea and energy you really can get a business started quickly or like you don't need to have startup capital or you know a lot of things you can just bring yourself to it and do it mm. Yeah, so 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 I suppose, sir, this is probably like something that's maybe not that talked about. But so, how do I? I don't know where to start with this one. But when, so my first, I had it. I actually had a job when I was fifteen. Like I had two jobs my whole life when I was a kid, and I was once working for five euros and forty cents an hour in the local pub. So you'd be very much coming from a background of having no money, and then when you go from having no money to having significant kind of money coming in not like a lot of times nobody kind of teaches you how to deal with that you know how to how to use the money and so for one of the things that I found was it was a challenge in, at the start I suppose um, is cash flow management like what how to manage the cash flow you know because cash flow is everything in business like if you, if you have no cash you're, you know the cash is you know that's what a business is it, it makes money but I mean, I just made a real balls of the of the cash flow situation for the first couple of years, and I learned valuable lessons from that. And so, I think if anyone starting, I'd say, look, there's a great book called Profit First. Go read it, go study it, and implement it straight away <laughs> before you get yourself in trouble with the tax man. <laughs> Class. So a book called Profit First for anyone that's jumping on the entrepreneurship ladder. Ashton Burnett, have you any other final questions for Martin? Martin, I want to ask you, in what thing did you have the most crack? What gave you more of a laugh, being on the late late or being on first day? <laughs> oh, I love that one. I saw, oh, without a doubt, like, I think the highlight the, the the highlight of my life so far has to be that night on the Late Late Show because I still, I still am like 
you know, just, it's just something that you, I, I mean, I've always wanted to do it. And I was like, I can't believe this is actually happening. I mean, I'm in the green room with John C. Riley, you know, from Step Brothers talking a load of pony and um, just having such a good time. And uh, yeah, that was, that was the best. That was probably the best night of my life so far. One of them anyway, professionally, like I suppose. One of, one of the best nights. I loved it. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you did. You back. you looked really happy that night. I was so happy. Yeah, I was really. I kind of like it was a little mild sound for me. Like I knew that's always something I wanted to do, and I want to. I'm sure I'll do it again. But uh, I was grateful for the opportunity, and I just I loved it so much. <laughs> Best night. Amazing. Now you're saying that. I wonder, do you practice gratitude? Do you have a gratitude journal? Uh, for about a year, I used to have a gratitude book that I wrote shit in every single day. I sat there and I wrote every day. I wrote like um, I, I I wrote down things I'm grateful for every single day. Um, I haven't done that in a while to be honest. But when I did do it, it was good, and you know, it just allowed me to connect to things that I'm already grateful for. So, I think I I appreciate gratitude. I probably exercise it on a, like a non-writing level at the minute, just as a kind of, um, um, I suppose, mental exercise. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I appreciate it big time. Very good. So I want to ask you, what is the one piece of life wisdom that you would like to leave our listeners with? Oh my God, no pressure. <laughs> It's like your final words before you exit the world. What do you what do you what do you say to people? Look, I think I suppose one of the things that I'd say is listen, stop worrying about what other people think. Stop limiting what you think you can do and just go after whatever makes you happy. Like your arse is on fire because whether you know it or not, your arse is on fire and <laughs> You've got a certain window of time to do what you need to do before that flame reaches your arse. So get out there and go after it. Classic. What wow. a way to end the podcast. Your arse is on fire. Get moving. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Thanks, so man. No, thank you, guys. Honestly, I love this chat and I love everything you are doing. So fair play. Keep up the great work and I'll be watching. Martin. That was epic. This has Love been it. a precious moment in time and a precious hour of our lives and we really appreciate you taking or saying yes to our invite and jumping on board to share your story with us and give us more of an inside scoop of what life is like for Martin Eastwood. And I never thought I'd be sitting here with two legends from Fingless Dublin on a podcast. <laughs> Yo, you're the real legend, Sarah. Come on. Oh, it's been beautiful. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I look forward to speaking again soon. Congratulations. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. You're officially now a partner in positivity with us. If this is your first episode, oh, we're so we're so grateful. If this is your 40th episode, we're equally as grateful for your ears, for your heart, for taking this time out for yourself and committing to your own positive mental health journey. Our intention for this podcast is for you to feel a little bit better afterwards. So we hope you take some time now to check in with yourself. How did you feel before? How do you feel now? And we've definitely done our job if you feel a little bit better and especially if you want to come back for more next week. If you do want to support us, we actually have a Kofi donation page. It's ko-fi.com forward slash partners in positivity. We really value the work that we're doing. We know there's so much positive and negative in the world and we want to contribute to people feeling their best. So we appreciate all of the donations we've had so far and welcome any more that are on the way. Thank you in advance. Also, if you got something of value from this and you want to share with friends or family to add to this trend of positivity in the world, we would love to be tagged in any posts on social media. Uh, you know where to find us. Other than that, guys, have an incredible week ahead and we look forward to feeding you some more nourishment for that beautiful mind, that beautiful garden of yours next week. <laughs>